My darling daughter Aggie. You've asked me how someone can belong in a place when she faces racism every day. I used to think of racism as unkind and cruel acts carried out by few individuals. But in the 28 years since you were born, I've realised that racism is a whole system of dominance locked deeply into a culture that privileges some groups over others. I'm so proud of you, Aggie. You are so beautiful and strong. But that's no surprise because you are a descendant of the Windrush generation. So it saddens me that even in 2018, you still are having to deal with racism and prejudice daily. That's me, 28 years ago now, nine months before you were born. That was the day we buried your great-grandmother, Agatha. Gran taught me more than anyone how to be honest and strong. She taught me how to face up to prejudice, what it takes to belong even when you are made to feel unwelcome. Let me tell you about the last time your great-grandmother would ever visit my mother's grave. I think it was her grief that made her snap that day. She was tired of being made to feel unwelcome. Like all of us, she longed to belong. Gramps was with her that day supporting her as he always did. to go home. We are home. We never belong here. That was also the day I had to deal with a very sexist and racist customer. Uh, don't. I want to see the manager. How can I help you, sir? I worked as the manager of a chain of coffee shops. I just told you. Now read my lips. I want to see the manager. I did get angry, but I was tired of being treated as a second-class citizen. That here's a she, and I am her. You read my lips. How can I help you, sir? <laughs> Enoch was right about you, look. Like. I hope for your sake your passport's in order. Hi 
lumps. Hi. <laughs> what are you looking at here? Hmm. Are you looking at me or mum? You look just like her. <laughs> it's getting hot in here, Grumps. Gran said you were sleeping. I was just pretending. She wanted me to help in the kitchen, but that is a woman's place. Grumps! <laughs> I fell in love with your grand Aki and Soulfish long before I fell in love with her. <laughs> Is that right? Don't you think I can't hear from in here? I think you got to his heart through his stomach, Gran. <laughs> I loved Gramps dearly. But I began to see that even he had been caught up in patriarchal attitudes. I wish you had a picture of my dad. So when are we going to see Robert? Talk about him all the time. <laughs> well played, you two. I'll take you to see him tomorrow. Just make sure your Robert is at home in the kitchen and it doesn't become your place alone. No, you come in at the kitchen. Why you say it like that? I'm the head of the household woman. Honey. Move, man. If you think I'm not honey in your promised land, you better think again. What's got into you? Because you know sea life was better back home. But we've been living here for 40 years. How come this is not home? Because me tired of people telling me to take my children and go back where me come from. And what makes me angry is that you don't get angry. You say, sure, forgive and forget. But hey, Bram, you got to remember to forgive. And me do a lot of remembering. Look, could we talk about this when you calm down? Calm if you don't listen carefully, you think you're back home in a Jamaican hurricane. Man, did I tell you? Tell me what? Earlier that evening, the area manager of the coffee shop chain called round. He responded to the customer's complaint. Not by calling him out on his behaviour, but by firing me. He also used his position to try and sleep with me. Like I said, racism and sexism are systemic. I'm telling you this now so you never let them get away with it like I did. Home is a place where we belong, Abraham. We invited here, but we never belong. We have to try to belong, Agatha. We're living here and we are strong. Hmm. You remember them signs saying no Irish, no dogs and no blacks? Why do you have to bring that up now? Remember how them church people wouldn't share communion wine with us? 
I love you, Agatha, but sometimes you really do me head in. Abraham tried to fit in and make the best of it. But Gran, she wanted to make it right. You know what it's like to be a black man and used by the system. Abraham. Mm. But you don't know what it's like to be a black woman and abused. Black women, we get it twice as bad. You forget what our daughter went through to try and become a doctor. When they said, stop your dreaming, black woman, you run along and become a nurse. Please, Agatha. I give my life to the NHS, to this country. I don't want to think about that anymore. You remember when them racist boys take our daughter? Him, no, that's a promising start. <laughs> Something smelling good. I want to see that black man in the kitchen. Oh, that. But he white. My dad get killed by the police outside a sugar company in 1930. Oh, I'm really sorry. Just looking for work, that's all. And he get killed. <coughs> uh, are you uh, enjoying your meal? Did Mandy tell you her mother get killed by the National Front? Front. Pass me the salt. It's dead. Robert's family came to the UK on the same ship as you. Ah, back to the ship's crew. No, wait. Your family is plantation owners. Make money out of slavery. <laughs> If your grandmother came on the Windrush, how come you white? <laughs> Poland had problems in 1943. My grandmother was one of the 38 women and 26 children that got transported to Mexico. After the war, she came here on the Windrush. She on our boards? It wasn't exactly your boat, Gran. We were all from the Caribbean. Trinidad, Guyana, Grenada. And we all had beautiful black skin. I don't remember no white folk on board. Gran was there. It's not a story often told, but I'm also a descendant of the Windrush. Like Mandy. I loved your father very much, but he never realised how privileged he was as a white man. You don't see any white descendants of the Windrush generation being deported back to Poland or Mexico. But Gran seemed to accept Robert, even though it was incredibly difficult for her.
my people go. Let my people go. You're always the head of the family, Gramps. But Grandma's is hot. You're a heartbeat of a generation, Gran. You lived the dream of a promised land. All people belonged. Everyone was equal. But now you've gone from this place. But you'll always remain in our hearts. And I promise you, I promise you, Gran, that I'll always keep your dream alive. I know that like me, you will continue to be inspired by the courage and resilience of the Windrush generation. I pray that you will always confront and expose racism, sexism and prejudice no matter how cleverly it is disguised. And please remember, no matter what they say, you will always belong.